Hi right, guys, welcome to Nine Links. This is your host, Alex. Today, I'm not gonna talk about one single plant. I'm just gonna give you guys an update on all my plants and how they're doing since it's getting close to, uh, well, it's uh, August. So most of the tropical plant around my area right now, usually towards the August, about close to finish blooming. And then it will be August and then going to September, it will start dropping the leaves and towards the end of September, I'll be moving them down to the basement. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna start off right now. This is the first one, uh, Night Blooming Jasmine, Centrium Nocturnum. As you can see, this is the third bloom. And I already got all the flower bud of well, flowers right now. And at nighttime smells really, really strong around this area. I'm just gonna move around real quick. And I watered this baby is really uh, root bound already. And I have to water it three times a day with hot days like this. So that means it's pretty severely root bound. I'll be cutting, do a little bit of cutting after bloom. Uh, as you can see, the uh, dome shape that I initially try to do, it's doing very well, but it's sticky, some areas are poking out. So we're gonna maybe prune it a little bit. But once it gets to uh, around, I would say, end of September, the most of the flower will fall off. Some of the fruits will be stay on there, but I'll take those fruits off too and do minor, just tidy up the stuff and then move it down to the basement. As you can see down here, I got the, uh, I got it really wet and got a sphagnum moss down there. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can focus. So you see sphagnum moss down here. Sphagnum moss and and I just finished watering it and you can see water down, uh, kind of build up down there, which is, I don't care. Uh, this one absorbs water like crazy. So even if there's a little water sitting down below the pot, like I said earlier, it's root bound already. So it's gonna absorb all the water anyway. So I'm just gonna leave it there. And this is one of the plants I told you about. It does not care how much water you water it. It's very, I mean, it's very, very hard to, make it root rot, okay? It's very safe and take all the conditions. If you put it in outside with the bright lights, it's right now uh, I'm taking this video in my patio. It's about 98 degrees. Yeah, it's, it's kind of hot, but it's a lot cooler than a couple days ago. So, all right, here's the first plant. We uh, And the second one, it's just a small one. It's right there. It's just half, half uh, jasmine and half uh, Thai pepper. So it's half and half and it has a little wood soil growing in there. It's doing great. Eventually we'll have to divide them up. But right now I'm just gonna keep, keep it in there. In terms of a pepper, the pepper is growing like crazy as well, as you can see. Let me see. That's uh, about fourth or fifth harvest on this pepper plant. I don't eat them, but uh, just harvest them just in case family member wants to use the pepper. But anyway. All right, let's go to the next one. And of course, water this twice a day um, because it dries up really fast. It's hard probably root bounds already too. All right, let's go Jasmine made of New Orleans. It's doing great. It just finished its uh, bloom and it started to have another wave coming out. And as you can see right here, I'm sorry, it's a little bit windy right now, uh, which is nice. It's kind of not as hot as eat the flower buds right there. There are quite a few of them around. I did a small pruning last time and I put some cuttings as well. I'll update you on that later. And then over here we have fig, fig. And um, as you can see, this fig is last time the pot broke because it's too, too small and tilt over and broke. This one, this pot is really heavy and I like it because it's a cylindrical shape. It's very stable on, Load, so it's very hard to tip over. So if you can see this one is fruiting as well. All the figs right here, if you want to count them, there's more right over here. There are quite a few. So yeah, this uh this is a tropical plant, but it's not fragrant plants. Like I said before, I plant this one just for eating the fruit uh for the family member. Um there. All right, and the next one, oh, uh, watering wise, I water this one three times a day because it's so hot in the patio. So a morning, afternoon, and evening, okay? And just feed it with so, so slow release fertilizer. And this is not a fig, it's the same fig. Uh, I propagated with the other two. 
I sold the other smaller one off and this one is big. Uh, it's started forming fruits. I don't think I'll eat the fruits for this one this year. I don't think it'll, it'll make it. Uh, towards the end of uh, August, it's probably, the weather's not gonna be hot enough, which means they will stop growing and towards September, it's already probably gonna drop leaves off. So this one, I'm more of a, once it gets to the uh, end of season, I'm probably pruning it off and then wait for next year for it to grow. This container is pretty big, so next year if it grows, it's gonna be a very, very, what should I say? Um, gonna, we're gonna get a lot of fruit out of it. And this one is neem tree right here, neem tree. Uh, that's where you guys, you know, like buy bugs, uh, insecticide soap and stuff with the neem oils inside. Um, there's a neem tree right here. That, that's what you, the seeds that you get from the neem tree, that's how they grind it up and cold press it, whatever you call it, and they make into a neem oil and which are to kill the insects and stuff. Uh, I'll be honest with you, this one, I have it. Uh, it the, the flower smells okay, but it doesn't bloom that much. Uh, I, my main purpose of using this one is like, I cut the leaves off. I'll show you later on the white champaga pots. I cut the leaves off and the branch off, prune it a little bit and just uh, cut the leaf into a tiny, uh, tiny bits and then put it on the uh, pot to uh, use it as mulch. And it, the leaf has a property, uh, an anti-bug property that will kill some of the bugs, discourage bugs from laying eggs in your pots. So the, and also, if you use these leaves, it's medicinal purpose too. I'll let you look that up. Don't uh, take my advice for it, okay? Not a medical advice. Anyway, all right. All right, guys, now back to my front porch. Uh, we're gonna go off the plant's first one here. This is Chinese perfume tree, or uh, we can call it Asian perfume tree. Um, we'll call it that name, uh, Aglaia odorata. See, it's blooming really well right now. It's just these little dots of flower. Okay, and then we'll move them here. This is these is the moth orchids uh, that my wife uh, bought. So I'll just leave it as is. Yes, I stuck a, a jasmine cutting in there just for fun. I have too many cuttings. All right, then we have uh, Chinese Sambidian or Chinese Orchid. This one's doing very well. I'm expecting flowering next next year. As you can see, the uh, one way to tell Chinese Sambidian Orchids see if they're doing well is that the amount of leaves it grows and amount of roots and how healthy the leaves compared to the root. As you, as you can see, they really there are a lot of leaves. And I'll show you a picture of this one. I almost killed this one too. Uh, when I first bought it. The thing about Sambidian is that not many people plant them. There's a reason for it. It's uh, in Western culture, no, not many people like this. And besides, it. care is very easy, but it's also, if you're not careful in a certain area, it can kill it really easily too. So it's it's kind of picky, but it's kind of not picky. I, I know it's kind of a weird that way. Um, but anyway, you see all these new growths right here. So I'm expecting like, I already, Move the moss back last time and checked it at the roots are very strong and there are a lot of roots that's one the plant the sambidian it, they love root bound so if they're root bound that means they're gonna bloom soon okay that's why you see people uh, what people who actually like sambidians have their sambidians in a small slender uh, slant pot and uh, they want to encourage the root to get bound quickly and they can grow quicker to grow the uh, bloom the flower for me i initially thought you know hey you know what let's plant a sambidian in the big pot uh, we're gonna expand more growth. Uh, not really. The sambidian gonna take their t take its time to grow all the roots inside the pot, and then becomes pot bound, and then start growing flower. So yeah, I gave myself really really long delay on the sambidian blooming. Now this one is sambidian uh, tianxiang, means heavenly fragrance. Okay, and this one, the middle one, is also sambidian. Oh, by the way, these guys, all the sambidians three sambidians right here i plant they are sambidian nc florian means uh, they're more summer bloom and they all of their leaves are very sharp so the, um, okay anyway this one is a uh, sumei it's another type of sambidian it's not doing it's doing well but it's just slow okay and this one is sambidian um what was the name i forgot i think it was the sambidian golden golden elf or Ruby chain, I think it's ruby chain. As you can see, it's doing very well. And the inside the, uh, there's a new leaf, leaf shoot coming out. There's another one right here, another leaf shoot coming out. And there's another one over there. 
And as you can see, let me move across right here real quick. As you can see right here, the roots are coming out and the roots are white and they're doing very well. This means this thing is root bound inside the pot already. Well, for most plants, when they're root bound, you need to change pot for symbidians. It's a good news. It means uh, blooming coming soon, okay? All right, now we are over here. This is a uh, uh, orange jasmine. It finished blooming last time. I think I showed a video of you for you guys to see. There's a lot of flowers, even a butterfly showed up. So now I'm gonna zoom in real quick, show you. The fruit is not big enough yet, but uh, I'll show you right now. I don't know if you can see it. These little dots right there, the, the kind of like a little line. Like, let me show you, see? kind of like a little line but it'll, it'll get bigger and once it does get bigger it'll get turn orange and then red and then you can plant it anyway next well and this is banana shrub and it's let's see third or fourth bloom already so it's doing great and a lot of sunlight as you can see a lot of sunlight it smells really good when you get close enough it's not like white champaga you can smell it further far away you have to get close to this one and the flowers uh bloom doesn't last long like this one right here probably about a couple days it's gone the leaves it looks great green as you can see the pot right there all right next over this is i don't know actually um my kids were playing around last time uh, when eating fruit uh, i think this was uh, logan or something and they planted it in there just for fun and it's been growing maybe logan or lychee or I don't think it's avocado, but anyway, I saw since it's dirt plant, I kind of help them take care of it. So it's been doing really well, and they picked the pot too. I typically don't like plastic pot, but they picked the pot, so oh well. Now this the uh, night blooming jasmine cutting. Uh, I don't know a few videos back, uh, I did a demonstration on pruning. There's one branch I did not want to throw away, so I just kind of stuck in there and just try, you know, keep it. As you can see, it's only take about what a month maybe less than that it's already doing very well it actually bloomed as you see all these flowers and stuff on there and by the way if you guys don't know about night blooming jasmine night blooming jasmine daytime flower looks like this but nighttime it the, the head will open up form a star shape and that's when it released the fragrance so think of it as daytime if they are collecting energy and make fragrant inside a little flower and then nighttime they open it and they spread the uh, fragrance the main thing they want to attract is moth to pollinate them anyway i won't go into much detail about that okay, now next we have three sweet olives here the first one this one is a sweet olive uh looks like it due for pruning but uh i'll just do it later uh, because reason being is remember every flower stops around for all the flowers that i have what well, plants i have they've stopped flowering around september so after around the end of uh, from early september to mid-september and august not august sorry october it's sweet olive showtime uh sweet olive that's when they bloom this one the first one is silver sweet olive the one over here that is the gold sweet olive yes and then the one behind right there that's the scarlet olive and there is one more sweet olive i want to collect i usually don't buy any more plants but there's one more that i want to collect that one is called four season uh tianxian taigu something like that um, that one is rare four season reason being is that uh, most sweet olive you have a silver gold scarlet they all bloom around end of august or early september they called it august sweet olive that's uh in a uh, asian culture that's what they call it but then there's another sweet olive it's called four season sweet olive which uh, they bloom throughout the whole year but the thing is the fragrance is not way 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 weaker than the uh these guys right here but the one that i'm going to collect uh i still haven't seen the seller post on the web yet it's four season sweet ol uh, olive that has the fragrance to match these guys. Plus it blooms all year round. So that one is gonna be a very, very hard to get. And I'm gonna compete with the other people to, and see if I can get them. But anyway, back to the subject over here. These three olives over here, I made a cutting last time. Uh, made a two and one died. The other one uh, do, uh, did all right. And I gave it to my relative. But this guy right here, 
seems like they need a little bit of pruning, but I don't prune them yet because, um, like I say, they're about to bloom. So I'll uh, just leave it as it is. I typically, and most most flower lovers will tell you this, most of the time when you want to prune something, prune after they, they flower, right? Anyway, now we're going back to the big white champaga, my favorite. All right, as you can see, I pruned it last time very heavily and it's now growing really well. Uh, again, the top seems to be a little top heavy. Uh, you can see it over here. These two uh, are sticking out the new branches. So I'm probably gonna cut those two off. Um, over here, it's doing very well. You see all the green leaves. The flower is not as many compared to before. Right now, I will see about, like if I show you on the top, you can see it right there. Probably, I'll say, I'll say right now about 10, around 10, 15 flowers compared to like 50. The reason it slowed down is that, uh, first of all, I stopped using the Bloom Booster. And second of all, it's getting close to the uh, season. It, it, it can, believe it or not, the plant can tell weather, like climate, time, temperature very easily. Night and day temperature change really quick. And oh, another thing, uh, you see those leaves that uh, I put on the, my uh, white shambhaka pots, those are neem, neem tree leaf. I cut off earlier. So I put it in there to mulch it in and also serve as a nutrient and also serve as a bug prevention. Like I say, it, might work, not work, it works for me so far, so I don't know how well it worked for you, okay? Okay, and now we have uh, cuttings here, uh, propagation cuttings. Uh, this one is the big one, so it's just a maple tree, uh, some kind of maple growing uh, next to my house. Didn't notice it grew that big, so I took it off and thought about that throwing away, but you know what? Let's keep it, see if I can make it into uh, something. And right here we have all the cuttings for jasmine made of New Orleans. As you can see all of them right here. Yep, I got those two cups back and uh, they're doing great. Um, this one, although this one right here, this one might not make it. We'll see, you never know until give it, I'll, I'll give it about like the, uh, and the black tray. Those have been there for three weeks already. I think it has been three weeks. These guys are pretty new, about a week and a half. We'll see how it goes. And typically, jasmines are easy to propagate. So I will, if uh, everything goes well, I probably get all of them right. If not, I get about uh, four or five of them, which I'm probably gonna just like my fig. I don't keep them around. Uh, it's too many plants. Uh, there's only me taking care of them all. So most likely, I will sell them next spring or next early summer. And I don't typically rely on the income of those. I just sell them and whatever I get from them, I, sp I spend it on the uh, fertilizer and the potting mix and for the future use. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Just give you a very, very brief, uh, you know, update on my uh, plants. And that's it for today, all right? Take care, okay? If you have questions, just post below.